The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that very the best speech, the best hadith, the best statement is the statement of Allah, meaning the Quran. And the best guidance, the best hadith, the best example is the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning the Sunnah. And the worst of all matters are those things that are innovated by the people pertaining to this deen. For all innovation leads to bid'ah, all bid'ah leads to dalala, which is going up the surah to mustaqim, and all dalala is in the nard, which is the fire. So we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that nard, from that fire. O oh Allah, give us good in this life, hasana. O oh Allah, give us good in the next life, hasana. Wa kina adab And O oh Allah, save us from the punishment of the fire, ya Allah. Amin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the be among the Muslimin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that Allah blesses the be among the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, with regards to being blessed with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are guided to proper direction. There is the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as this dua is in the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa as well. We have the dua of Allahumma inni aj'anni min al-tawabina wa aj'anni min al Oh Allah, blesses the be on those who make tawbah to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And oh Allah, blesses the be on those who are the mutahirin, those who purify themselves. When we make wudu, preparing ourselves for salah. This is one of the duas of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, makers of those who make tawbah. O oh Allah, makes us those who purify ourselves. We're told by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that all of Bani Adam, Qutah, all of mankind is going to sin. We're all going to make mistakes. But the best in the Son of Allah, those that make tawbah. Right? To be of those that make, be of the mutawabin, those who make tawbah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we're all going to sin. And even with the boss to how you sin, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gives us the best example with the boss to what do we do if we sin? In the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of the Sahabas, Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him. One of the Jews came to Ibn Mas'ud and they said, your prophet or your messenger, he teaches you about everything, even how to go to the bathroom. Ibn Mas'ud said, yeah, even with the boss too, Go into the bathroom. Because Allah said in the Quran, in this Quran is the answer for Kuli Matu. In this Quran is the answer for all things. So even with the bar to when we sin or if we sin, how do we deal with those sins? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, he said, Verily, all of my ummah will be of those that will have their sins blotted out. He didn't use the word we he didn't use the word forgiven. But he used the word in this hadith, afa, which means to blot out. He said, all of my ummah will have their sins blotted out, except those who expose their sins. Except those who do their sins in the open. He said that those that expose their sins are those who do things in the nighttime. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed it from the people. But yet in the morning time, they tell the people, oh, so-and-so, I did such and such, I did such and such. Allah subhanahu wa had concealed us from the people all night, but yet in the morning time, you exposed it to the people, you remove that concealment. We're told, in the we're told in the day of judgment that the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, going through another hadith. He said, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa will call the ibad. He'll call the servant, and he'll put a hijab. You'll put a covering between you and everybody else. And you'll have a secret conversation with Allah. And Allah will ask you, did you do such and such? Did you do such and such? And the Ibad will say, yes, I did. I did this. I did this. I did that. And Allah, Allah will say, but because you had modesty, you had shame, you hid it from the people. Today, I forgive you of your sin. So what are the prerequisites with the God to those who sin. And Allah said through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the bad Adam is going to sin. But how do we sin? What do we do with that sin? 
He said, all of those that sin from my ummah, they will have it blotted out. Except those who expose that sin. So the goes to how do you expose your sin when you tell the people. And also today, we have the World Wide Web. There's many people that go on the World Wide Web and they show everybody with the goes to what are they doing in their life. The best thing to do is to hide your faults. We're going to sin. That's the way of the Ibad. That's the way of a servant. We're going to sin. All the bad in Adam, Khotal. But the best in the sight of Allah, those that make Tawbah. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as well in the time of Umar al An, there was a man who came and confessed his sins with the cross to committing adultery or fornication. And in the time of Umar al An, he said, man, it would have been better for you. It would have been better for you if you would have hid your faults and made Tawbah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But the cross to exposing yourself or telling on yourself. And with the ball to the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a man that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I did such and such. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned away from him. And the man said, Ya Rasulullah, I did such and such. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned away from him. And he did this four times. And then he asked the man, are you Majnoon? Are you crazy? And then he asked the people, is there anything wrong with him? Is he crazy? He said, no. Nah. He said, it would have been better for you if you would have hid your faults. But because you exposed it and you told me and you told on yourself, you brought witness against yourself, now it's mandatory that I implement the hadood. And that's what the boss to anybody. When we expose ourselves, a lot of people say, well, why are the people talking about me? Or why are they saying certain things about me? Because you expose yourself to the people. You're all on the Facebook. You're all on Instagram. You're all on the World Wide Web showing everybody with no shame. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said with the goal to Haya. And Haya is having modesty or shame. And modesty and shame is a part of Imam. He said the person that doesn't have Haya, they're going to do whatever it is that they want to do. They have no shame. But the goal is for having shame and being fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing your fault. This is a part of having imam. The person that goes out and does sin and doesn't care about what the people think, doesn't care about what the people say, this person is one who has arrogance. Well, I don't care about Allah. I don't care about the people. I don't care that I'm doing wrong in the sight of Allah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do me. This is arrogance in the sight of Allah. Remember Allah spoke to us in the Quran, and who was more better than he who calls to the deen? They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They work righteous deeds and they say, So Allah says, The best in the son of Allah are those that call people to the deen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The worst in the son of Allah are those who hinder people from the deen. Remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The best dawah is not by lip service, but the best dawah is by example. So you can show somebody a bad example of this deen. That's why you hide your faults. The Muslims are supposed to hide their faults. Because it doesn't matter about what you say, the people are watching you. The best in the sight of Allah, those who say that I'm of the Muslimin, those who work righteous deeds. That's how you call somebody to the deen. And also Allah SWT said, who is more worse than he who hinders people from the deen? Making the way crooked. He said, in the accurate of the other kafirin. Remember, going back to the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everybody on my ummah that sins, I'll blot out your sins. I'll blot it out. Except those who expose themselves. This is a part of kufr. Right? Those who hinder from the deen, these will be of the kafirin. You're hindering people. This is a part of kinder, part of kibber, which is a part of arrogance. So the goal is to understanding this reality with the goal is to if we sin, and we're going to sin, because the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it has been written for Badi Adam to sin, we're going to sin. But the best in the sight of Allah, those that make Tawbah. If you sin, what do you do? Number one, hide your fault. It's not for you to tell anybody, well, I did this, well, I did that. Right? Hide your fault. Turn to Allah. Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those that do a sin, follow it up with a good deed. Those who have transgressed their souls, Understand, do not doubt the rahmah of Allah. Do not doubt the mercy of Allah. 
Verily Allah forgives all sins. Jami'a. Verily he is oft forgiving, most merciful. But the God, through those who see somebody that sins, what do we do? First and foremost, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who hide the faults of others, Allah will hide your faults. Those who hide the faults of others, Allah will hide your faults. But those who expose the people, try to shame the people, those who try to put people on blast, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he will put you on blast even if you're in your own house. He'll expose you. He'll put you on blast. Right? Even in your own house. So Rasulullah said, with regards to those who see somebody doing something, if we were talking about maybe you caught somebody doing something by yourself, there's a difference between someone that catches somebody doing something, they're trying to hide it, and then with regards to another person who does something on the world wide web in front of everybody. There's a difference. Somebody that you catch them doing something, man, you're going to hide the fault of your brother and your sister. You don't go out and slander that person. You don't go out and tell that person that person sins. Because Allah Lord said, those who hide the faults of others, Allah will forgive you of your sins. He will hide your sins. But those that expose the people, Allah will expose you. And if Allah exposes you, understand that his exposure is way more, uh, more detrimental than any type of exposure that you can do. So Allah Subhanahu said, hide the faults of your brother, Allah Subhanahu will hide your faults. With regard to those who see sins, with regard to those who see sins, Allah Subhanahu said that verily the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, chapter 3, verse 110, Allah says, verily you are the best of Ummahs ever raised up among mankind. You're the best of Ummahs ever raised up for mankind. Why? Because you enjoy the right, you forbid the wrong, and because you believe in Allah. So part of the prerequisite of being the best of the mankind is that we enjoy the right, forbid the wrong. What do we do when we see sin? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that those that see something wrong, first, change it with your hands if you have the power to do it. This is for those who have authority. Right? Muslim countries don't have Muslim police and so forth and so on. They have the ability to change things. You see something wrong, you see oppression, you see things that are foul, they're going against what Allah Subhanahu says to do, you change it with your hands if you have the ability to do that. If you're not able to do that, then he said, speak against it. Use your design. Talk about it. Give somebody nasiha. Right? Give somebody some admonishment. Give somebody some advice. He said, and if you're not able to do that, then at least hate it in your hearts. But again, even with the God, hating it in your heart, it still requires some type of action. If I hate something in my heart, it doesn't mean that I love it, squeeze it, and tease it. It means that I distance myself from that thing. If I really hate it in my heart, right, I'm going to distance myself from it. Because your heart's not going to allow you to be around things that you don't like. So again, if I see something wrong, I change it with my hands. Right? I see somebody out there pressing somebody. I might see somebody beating up on somebody. The Muslim is one, man, we are against oppression with regards to wherever it's done. We change it with our hands. If I can't change it with my hands, I got a weakness, at least speak about it. You can Google it. You can write about it. You can blog about it. Right? You might be able to put something out there, tell somebody personally. If I'm not able to do that, at least I hate it in my heart. And I distance myself from that thing. Alhamdulillah, what does that mean? But again, with the God, if we see something wrong with our Muslim brother or our Muslim sister, there was a saying of the scholars of old. He said, in enjoying the good, be good in enjoying the good. And don't be bad in forbidding the bad. Be good in enjoying the good. And don't be bad, right, in forbidding the bad. What does that mean? When you're giving somebody nasiha, use wisdom. If I'm correcting somebody, I'm going to use wisdom in how I do it. I'm not going to be arrogant with it. I'm not going to beat nobody upside the head with it. We have an example in the time of Imam Malik. In the time of Imam Malik, Imam Malik was given a doors. He was given a talim. Right? He was given a class. And with the part of this class, he was speaking about the wudu and how to make wudu the wudu. And when he came to the part of the hands, he said, just wash the hands. But he didn't say, go in between the fingers. After the doors was over, after the class was over, one of his students 
pulled him to the side, not in front of everybody, pulled him to the side and said, yeah, shit, but we have a hadith with the isnad, a sahih isnad, it goes back to this, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that when you wash the hands, make sure you go in between the finger joints, right, and the toe joints, right, but he took him to the side, he put him away from everybody, he was sincere, giving him dalil, didn't blast him in front of everybody, what did Imam Malik do? When he understood the hot, the next time he had another class, he changed his position. Right? Today, a lot of people, they see something on Facebook, they see somebody post something, they want to blast them in front of everybody. They go in the comment section, right? They want to screenshot it, blast it, put it in front of everybody. That's not proper or dad. You see somebody doing something wrong, you see somebody doing a sin, yes, we're supposed to enjoy the right and forbid the wrong, but you better be good and enjoy the good. You gotta have the right intent when it's joining the good. Right? You gotta have the right nasiha. Right? Take them to the side. Hey, bro, I seen that you did this. Right? Away from the people. And we have a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, if you see something wrong with your brother, grab him by his hand and pull him to the side. Right? This deed ain't about arrogance. This deed ain't about, well, I know more than you. Or I'm smarter than you. Or I'm more righteous than you. That's not the deed. To the contrary, with the more knowledge that you have, the more humble you will be. The more knowledge that you have, you understand that you're nothing. Allah said, Qul insan and da'if, Allah created mankind weak. Right? The more knowledge that you have, the more iman that you have, the more taqwa that you have, or you profess, what's going to happen? Right? The bigger the test. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Right? A lot of great men, a lot of knowledge, Allah will whoop you. Allah says wisdom comes with experience. Right? Halim comes from blunders. Forbearance comes from blunders. You got to make mistakes in order to have wisdom. You got to make mistakes in order to be humble. Sometimes we get high and mighty. Oh, I got knowledge. I got this. And Allah will show you. You know nothing. Mm -hmm. Allah said, do you not see that we test you once or twice a year so that you may humble yourself and turn back to Allah's Father. So again, that's the dicker for today with the bar of two open sins. Again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, all of my ummah, I will blot out all of the sins of my ummah except those who do it out and open. The mujahideen. Those are the mujahideen. Those who do things out in the open. I won't blot their sins. He said, because I concealed it during the night time. I concealed it in the late. But yet in the morning time, they say, ya fulan, fulan, I did this, I did that. And again, they took away the rahmah of Allah. They took away the concealment of Allah. So Allah won't forgive you. Right? Forgive your sins. Excuse me. Hide your sins. That's the thing. Hide your sins. Don't be arrogant with your sins. Again, telling somebody about your sins, that could be a personal matter. Or posting it out on Facebook. Doing a video on Instagram. TikTok. Whatever it may be. You drinking. You smoking. You all on World Wide Web. Not understanding that everybody that sees it, they can bear witness against you on the day of judgment. They can copy, paste, share. So that one little deed that you think that you did is nothing. Well, I don't care. I'm doing it. I want likes. I want all of that. That could be the thing that destroys you. So again, I want to be loved. Mr. Dr. Regine, right? Hide your faults. But the bars of those that see faults, don't expose the fault of your brother or your sister. If you see something... <coughs> You see your brother and your sister doing something, and you want to give them nasiha. You want to correct them. Make sure that your make sure that your intention is correct. Make sure you're doing it sincerely. You're not doing it to push nobody on blast. You're not doing it to make yourself higher or better than the next person. Remember, Rasulullah said, so said, "You do not believe unless you want for your brother and your sister what it is that you want for yourself." So, if I'm gonna make it to the judgment. I want to make sure that I'm not doing nothing wrong, right? I want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not blundering, that I'm doing something, I'm darling. <clears throat> Please tell me that I'm doing something wrong. <clears throat> but when you tell me, man, tell me with sincerity, man, do it with love, right? The same thing, you see somebody, do it with sincerity and do it with love, inshallah. We'll continue after break, inshallah. I mean.
الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله وشر الله لا لا وشر الله محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد الرحمن الرحيم الرحيم كتب ربكم على نفسه الرحمة he said verily I have made it a covenant upon my nafs to be merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us multiple opportunities to be forgiven of our sins. Juma to Juma, forgiven of our sins. Ramadan to Ramadan, forgiven of our sins. Salah to Salah, forgiven of our sins. Right? And even if we do sin, what do we do? We hide our faults. People came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The people came to Umar al Right? They came trying to confess their faults. Umar said, man, it'd be better for you if you hide your faults and Allah will forgive you of your faults. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a man came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "I did everything possible with this woman. I did everything that you could think of with this woman." He said, well, "Did you dip the bucket in the well? Did you penetrate?" He said, "No, nah, but I did everything other than that." Man, give me my punishment. He said, "Go make two rakats." He said, "Go make two rakats, right?" And he said, "Ya Rasulullah, is this for me or for anybody else that he tells this?" He said, this is for you and anybody else that goes through this. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rahman, Rahim is the most merciful of those who show mercy. So understand that nothing is impossible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even with the guards to our sins, even with the guards to us making mistakes, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he even tells us what to do with that mistake. We're going to sin. What do we do with that sin? He said, hide your sins. Even with the God, you see somebody sinning, how do you correct that person? Man, be sincere with that. Make sure you're good and you're joining the good. And make sure you're not bad in the forbidden of the bad. Don't beat nobody upside the head. Want for your brother what it is that you want for yourself. So again, that's the dicker for today. Again, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily for all of my ummah, I will blot out their sins. Allah is going to say that, all of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will blot out their sins, meaning as if they never existed, as if they never did it before, to blot out. Afa, right? Afa is different than forgiveness. Afa means to blot it out like it never existed. He said, except those who do sins in the open, right? Except those who make it exposed to the people. They tell the people, Allah concealed it for you, but yet you tell the people, hey man, I did this last night, or I did that last night. Or on the World Wide Web. Again, we can even place it in a scenario with the guards through being on the World Wide Web. You're exposing yourself to the people. When you expose yourself to the people, you take off that rahmah. You take off that concealment. Just like at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I did this. He turned away from him. Ya Rasulullah, I did this. He turned away from him. Right? He did it four times. Then he said, man, are you Majnoon? You crazy? Is he all right? Right? He went to go investigate, investigate with, his, with his family. Is he okay? There's something wrong? Is he drunk? He said, no, nah, he's okay. He said, man, it would have been better for you. It would have been better for you if you hid your faults. But once you expose it, you make it manifest it. Now it's incumbent upon me to give you the hudun. It's incumbent upon me to give you the punishment. Same thing with the God's wild here in this land. When you hide your faults, man, that's between you and Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the day of judgment, those who hid their faults because they had shame, they had haya, they had modesty. Then Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on the day of judgment, he'll call you in that hijab. He'll call you in that secret council between you and him. Just you and him, nobody else. Did you do such and such? Although he already knows what you did. But he's going to ask you, did you do such and such? He said, yeah, I did this. He said, did you do such and such? Yeah, I did this. He said, because you hid it from the people. You had top of me. You hid it from the people. I hid it from the people. And today I forgive you of your sins. So have talk of Allah. Even with the fault of your sins, have talk of Allah. You doing something, man, have fear of Allah. Have haya of Allah. Have shame of Allah. You're going to sin anyway. Again, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all the bad Adam, khata. You're all going to sin. We're all going to sin. Everybody going to sin. Even the Musa he killed somebody, but he made talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happened? He became the best of the best. The most oft-repeated story in the Quran, Musa alayhi salam, but did you know he was a murderer? Before he even became a prophet, he was a murderer. 
right? So never doubt the rahmah of Allah, right? We make sins, do the right thing with that sin. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah so with the glory to that sin. You see somebody sin, man, be the best of the best, even with the glory to how you give your brother nasiha, how you give him an advice, be sincere, pull him to the side. Don't put him on blast. Don't be all in the comment section. Don't be screenshotting, showing everybody, oh, look what he's doing. Man, put him to the side. You really want him to change? Man, be sincere. It's like, hey, bro, I see what you're doing, man. I want the best for you. I don't want you to fall to man, so I'm going to holler at you like this, man. One on one. Keep him 100. Don't be a buster. I hope you love it. Again, that's the victim for today. Any good that I said today, I hope you love it. We say all praise is due to Allah. Because verily all knowledge comes from Allah. The Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, comes from Allah. Right? So anything that we know is because Allah allowed us to have that knowledge. So we say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.